He has decades of experience in the public service under his belt. But what has shaped his political outlook over the years? What has he struggled with most and how has he weathered the storms? Tonight, ANC party leader Musalia Mudavadi speaks to Lillian Muli on weathering the storms of 2020 into 2021 on this installment of Events 2020. How are you doing? Thank you. All right. Great. Welcome to MM Center. This is the Musalia Mudavadi Center. Absolutely. We yes. want to get to see a bit of the other side to Musalia that perhaps a lot of people don't know. Okay. Wycliffe Musalia Mudavadi is a creature of the landscape of political power. His story can be summarized by three words, proximity to power. But I just want to uh, draw your attention to something here. <laughs> this just an, uh, our first president, 1964 to 1978, mm -hmm. is President uh, Mzejomo Kenyatta. And then the second president, Daniel Arap Moy, 1978 to 2002, mm -hmm. uh, clearly the 2022 mm -hmm. tag will be fitted in. Are we likely to see a 2022 dash of, of Honorable Mosale Modavadi? Are we likely to see you follow that? God willing, uh -huh. and also through the Kenyans' uh, wish. Uh, the Muslims say, Inshallah. Um, but I say, God willing. Very but, interesting. We spoke about Moi. Yes. Your body language there looks like you really had a good working relationship. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. I, I must admit we did. He was retired President Daniel Arab Moy's last vice president, albeit the shortest serving. He was touted as the likely second in command if Raila Odinga clinched the presidency in 2007 and finished a distant third when he threw his hat in the ring five years later. He's the son of Moses Mudamba Mudavidi, a one-time powerful cabinet minister in Moy's administration. The famous family name often finding him categorized among the dynasties in the country's political dichotomy of the haves versus the have-nots. Extremely naive sometimes in terms of how people want to uh, try and categorize uh, Kenyans. Because of politics, mm -hmm. We are beginning to see people trying to take advantage yes. of a difficult economic situation in the country, mm -hmm. prevailing in the country, to try and categorize people mm -hmm. um, as dynasties and non-dynasties. Okay. So it's a cheap ploy for, for political mm -hmm. uh, gain. But the hustler vs. dynasties narrative makes the former Sabatia MP uncomfortable. My early life, uh, my dad was not a minister. Uh, my father became a minister much later uh, in my life. Um, uh, therefore, the foundation that I have in terms of who I am, um, the formative times were always in the context of uh, like any other um, uh, citizen. I spent my early days in public schools here in uh, Nairobi. We were brought up uh, through a culture of school and holiday in the rural area. Mm -hmm. So religiously, uh, every school holiday, I had to spend in Mululu, uh, in Sabatia. Mzemoe's demise was a personal loss for Mudavadi, having served as his fourth vice president. Moy was for the former local government minister, a mentor who largely shaped his political outlook. Transition is not easy. Uh, Moy was transiting. Uh, and um, Moy, I think, had his own ideas of how to manage the transition or how to manage uh, the succession uh, within the framework of Kano. Uh, Sometimes you look at it and say, the more things change, the more they become the same. <laughs> uh, we, we, we are in, uh, in, in, in um, a transition uh, again. 
um, heading to 2022. And um, Kenyans will be making their decision. Uh, but you can draw some parallels. Um, in the build up to 2002, uh, Moi had ceased to have confidence in his uh, deputy president or his vice president then. Uh, and that, at that time, uh, we were talking of uh, uh, the late Professor George Saitoti. If you look at it now, and uh, you read the politics, um, unless, unless it's a narrative that is, is fiction, or stranger than fiction, uh, so to speak, uh, it, uh, it would appear that uh, 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 sometimes the, the, the president and his deputy don't seem to be reading from the same script. Here I am as a traditionalist. <laughs> Omoami. Omoami is a leader. But Mudavadi's major struggle has been to consolidate the vote-rich Western Kenya region. That has been an open hunting ground for presidential hopefuls since the country returned to multipartism in a country where ethnicity is a tool of political mobilization. Mudavadi, though, seen as the first son of Western Kenya politics, is yet to solidify his grip in the house of Mulembe. This is the weakness that I see in our political circles and sometimes even in our media houses. They are so fixated on the personality politics that when people are raising issues, they don't want to pick up the issues. The Amani Congress boss has seemingly been playing safe with an eye on 2022 State House succession, often viewed as an alternative or compromise candidate. His initial hard stance on the Building Bridges Initiative and the clamor for constitutional amendments has faded away. In its place, support for the referendum push before the country heads back to the ballot in under 19 months. When you look at the BBI, let us put uh, the country first. Because the initial process of getting to the BBI, the handshake and what have you, and then the way it was being marketed or presented, uh, Unfortunately, it was being presented as if it is an agreement or an arrangement of just two people. So it, it lacked that process of inclusivity, the whole idea of bringing people uh, together. The intent and the content of BBI is broadly good, but there are fundamental issues that need to be revisited. We were able to track about 14 changes, which included things like the independence of the, the IABC. In the report that was presented in Bomas, there was a massive interference on the independence of the IABC. We raised concerns. And I had said that if these changes are dealt with, then we are good to go. So tell me, where have I been inconsist inconsistent? Nataka! Nizindue! While the current political setup appears to pit Deputy President William Ruto's camp against that of ODM leader Raila Odinga, efforts to profile Modavadi's stake in the greater scheme of things are afoot. His presence during national festivities and government-driven projects, such as the Huduma number that was riddled with controversy, raising attention. Our state functions on national holidays days for the president, or are they national holidays for all Kenyans? Don't you think it's absolutely naive for somebody to think that a national day recognized in our constitution, like Jamhuri Day, that I should not participate in a Jamhuri Day? I think that is uh, out of question. We, 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 should, we, should, we should help people to understand mm -hmm. that they are national days, and they are very personal events of a president. Um, and, and I would like to encourage Kenyans to get out of the hangover that was there when um, uh, people were fighting for the multipartism. Uh, at that time, we were able to see people boycotting uh, national holidays. Uh, the agenda then was very different and the approach 
for those who wanted to boycott was that of an outright protest. Just because I'm not in government, we should not cease to be objective. If the government is doing something that is positive, let us acknowledge it. And where they are failing uh, in their policy direction and not doing the things right, then we criticize them. He cites corruption, mismanagement of public funds and poor policy decision by leaders, both political and those heading various institutions, as the bane of the country. Where we are with a debt that is close to 8.4 trillion public debt, and, the bulk, and now the bulk of it is external. So there are two risks. One, it is expensive. Two, we can be subjected to very serious exchange rate fluctuations. Which is where we currently are. And it then impacts immediately mm -hmm. on that debt. All right, that is where we are. So what would I do? One of the things I've said is that the Minister for Finance, and he recently admitted, he has to renegotiate with our creditors so that our debt can either be rescheduled or restructured. What has happened in the Jubilee debt portfolio is that for some of these infrastructure projects, they have taken inter uh, money at a rate of 7%, repayable in 15 years. And it's in billions. So the bigger problem we have here, the more the taxation will become, the more painful and punitive it will become. So in simple language, as Fuliza is dealing with the ordinary citizen, the government is also having its mega Fuliza with the big creditors calling on them, calling on the Treasury to say this installment is due, this installment is due. The former finance minister speaks of an economy ravaged by the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, but lauds the Ministry of Health for being hands-on in the midst of an image-denting multi-billion shilling scam at Kemsa. What will be critical is to actually make sure that we prioritise the allocation of our resources properly. This is going to be more an issue of prudent resource management. Suspend some projects. Cut out some programs that have been there and let the resources focus on where there will be serious multiplier effects. Um, education, health. Um, what can we do to actually spar investors to start looking into, 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 into Kenya afresh? He has vast experience in public leadership, having been a vice president, a deputy prime minister and cabinet minister in charge of various dockets. Um, in my career, in political careers, for instance, where I go through, there are issues that... There are storms you come through. Um, sometimes you can become so passionate about some of these storms or in the midst of these storms that you don't see the deeper impact or meaning of some of those storms. For instance, the succession politics of 2000 and, uh, and, um, and two, uh, it was not easy. Uh, we went through a very difficult time, a lot of turmoil. Um, and of course, I lost my seat. I go through in this book how, for instance, for three years, I was uh, subjected to a commission of inquiry. Can you imagine the person who stopped Goldenberg? That is me. I was now being subjected to the commission of inquiry as if I was the author of it. His backbone, he says, is his family. Surely that's about family. Family is your pillar. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, um, uh, after you've gone through the rigorous aspects of, uh, uh, of our politics, 
uh, you have to go back home. Mm-hmm. And when you go home, the people who talk to you, who look at you as who you are, they don't look at your position. They don't look at your status. Uh, they're talking to you as your closest people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is how I, I take it. And um, mm-hmm. it's... it's, it's uh, these are my two sons, yes. um, my wife and my daughter. Okay. So three children. Three children. Uh-huh. Yeah. All teenagers? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, they're now in the early 20s. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, believe you me, I'm, I've been a very good sportsman in my earlier days. Um, when I left Nairobi school in 1979, I actually held the 100 and 200 meters record. And I left it there. I don't know who broke it eventually. Um, on the Kenyan front, um, a fan of AFC Leopards. Uh, when I go into the Premier League, um, uh, I'm a fan of uh, Manu. Okay, <laughs> and uh, sometimes uh, on the Kenyan front, uh, or, I mean, and when we go to La Liga. I am sometimes torn between Real Madrid and uh, and uh, Barcelona, um, so that's 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 the soccer side of it. ANC party leader Mosalia Mudavidi has been fronted as a possible presidential contender in 2022. Is he the change Kenya wants to see? Only the ballot will tell. Lillian Muli, Citizen TV.